Hello everyone and welcome to my video. Today we'll be exploring what it means to be a real K-pop fan. I'd like to preface that this is in the perspective of an N-citizen, so this video will be centered around what I've been seeing on Stan Twitter surrounding fan behaviors in the community. In order for me to vent my frustrations, I've decided to make an in-depth video filled with my ideologies on what I've seen in K-pop for the past few years, and this video will be very discussion-based, so excuse my lack of evidence for some subjects. With that being said, I don't expect people to agree with me. These are all my opinions, and you're free to have your own. With that being said, let's begin. To start off this video, let's discuss cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation is taking an aspect of someone's culture and using it as an aesthetic and such or profiting off of it for personal gain. We see this fairly often in the K-pop community, from the appropriation of black culture to South Asian culture, and I believe many of us know that this isn't right, but what a lot of us fail to realize is that it shouldn't be weaponized. What do I mean by this? I mean to fuel fan wars instead of caring about the actual problem at heart. Take for example Hwasa and the quote unquote Nigerian wear she wore at the sauna on the TV show she was on. There were many people accusing her of appropriating Nigerian culture and when Nigerian fans spoke up and said it was nothing of the sort, did anyone ever admit that they were wrong? No, not at all. Another example would be the feathers in Chori's hair, a part of the teaser photos for the new Luna comeback. I watched a video that I'll link in the description about Native Americans talking about how they thought I watched a video that I'll link in the description about Native Americans talking about what they thought was cultural appropriation based off a few K-pop photos and when they discussed Chori's, they said they weren't offended. It was very interesting to watch and to get a good perspective. With this, let's talk about NCT. There have been many instances where they've worn braids, a form of CA, cultural appropriation, and said something aligning with fat phobia, colorism, etc. These things are clearly not okay, and understandably, people will get mad since these things should not be said at all. Fans come in many shapes, sizes, colors, and ages and should not be dismissed. So what happens when those who are offended speak up? Let's use CA as an example. In the perspective of a black and citizen, it hurts me to see how we continue to be silenced in this fandom for the concerns we raise pertaining to SM and NCT's ignorance, especially when NCT is a global group. We see this with I and citizens and K and citizens so often where our concerns are pushed away and neglected and when we try to address these issues we are called fake fans. It's honestly ridiculous. Even during the virtual fan signs, some I and citizens tried their best to address these issues with NCT directly and had to private their accounts since they were being harassed. Instead of actually discussing issues that need to be addressed, some of y'all would rather have done beg for carrots. Hey, It's literally fucking embarrassing. I could go into even more depth surrounding the issues with KN citizens and not understanding CA and other problems, but that is for another video. To summarize, it doesn't matter who you are, everybody should be educated and it's not a bad thing. I'd also like to briefly talk about mistranslations. Although K-Nets get on a lot of our nerves as I fans, keep in mind we are no better. There are plenty of things wrong with both parties, but once again, that is for another video. As for mistranslations, those who are non-natives who don't speak Korean or aren't Korean at all have no right to speak on when things are a mistranslation. I find it quite annoying for iFans to say, that is not what X Idol said, when they speak no Korean whatsoever, and like I said before, being silenced is very frustrating. Who are we as non-natives to speak upon the Korean language when we know nothing? Keep in mind this is K-pop, they speak Korean and are made for Korean people. Moving on to holding idols accountable, let's talk about the boycott. For more context on Twitter, before the comeback, a tag was going around about boycotting residents. This was because of the voting surrounding some members not getting equal promotion for the album when it came to secondary content that was mentioned in the V-Live. Many K and citizens and I and citizens participated in trending the tag and within hours, SM responded with this. Fans who love NCT, hello. We apologize for the confusion caused by the WISH 2020 voting program during the NCT 2020 live event. To commemorate the release of the full-length album this time, 
Wish 2020 was prepared as an event to create and release unit contents together with fans, but we, too, fully empathize with everyone's concerns and have modified the relevant event plan. Voting for only want, choosing activities that NCT will do, will proceed. The 24 groups personally drawn by the members on the VLive broadcast will show new sides of the members through various contents in the future. So please give NCT 2020 lots of interest. Personally, I didn't participate in the boycott, and I didn't think it was that big of an issue, but SM did, and they scrapped the idea in a matter of hours. This clearly grabbed their attention no problem, so why is it a problem when another boycott tag goes around trying to gain SM's attention when there are actual real-life issues with SM's practices and NCT's behaviors? The priority of N-Citizens are clearly out the window, and their twisted ideologies of what should be a priority are disgustingly distasteful. I understand the initial boycott started from concern from K and citizens, but they didn't even bother to help us educate NCT on their wrongs and things that need to be changed. Many POC and citizens were involved in supporting this boycott, including me, and to see people say, you guys aren't real fans, felt like a slap in the face. It's called tough love. Everyone should hold their faves accountable instead of letting them run around ignorant. The hypocrisy here is very prevalent, and it's actually what made me want to make this video. Finally, as fans, we shouldn't feel afraid of holding our faves accountable. And when others outside of fandom hold NCT accountable for their actions, don't fight it. It's the truth. What are you going to say? No? If so, you're failing to realize the real issue at hand. Comfort Idols I have a bit of a problem with this. I understand people find safe places and hobbies, but many find comfort in these specific idols and take the term idol too seriously. Let me read the Google definition for y'all. Idol, an image or representation of a god used as an object of worship. After reading the definition, take note to the similar words below. Icon, god, image. These words show worship like the definition says, and yes, although they are called idols, how about we take a moment to realize how bad these labels are. Nobody should be put on a pedestal of worship because we are all people. We don't have to jump through hoops for these idols. An example of what I mean is streaming. Is streaming important? Yes. It fits a lot of the criteria for award shows, but what if I were to tell you you weren't obligated to stream? Many stands seem to be tied up in the ideology of what a fan is based on the amount of effort a fan puts into supporting a group. I don't care what group it is, you stand, but no one owes a group anything. In my opinion, a good fan is someone who likes the music and members. That's really it. We make mistakes, we disappoint, we learn, we have emotions, we change. And not everyone has to follow them so blindly. K-pop stands from what I've seen continue to behave like a blind herd of sheep when they don't have to. We can still enjoy our idols, Willis calling them out. We can view them as an entertainment instead, as I've always had. There's a lot more to discuss when it comes to the harmful indications of the term idol, but this is also for another video. For this next subject, I'm speaking from the stance of 2016. I've been a K-pop stan for over four years now, and to see the shift of stan culture right before my eyes, <sighs> I mean 2016 was full of so much encouragement, and people weren't fighting as often as it is now. There was less competition when it came to voting, streaming, and everything else under the sun. It's constantly this he said, she said BS when it comes to fandoms and it becomes tiring to scroll on Twitter and see it. Everyone is trying to tear the next group down, one after the other, and I can't do it anymore. How do we solve these issues within the community though? Here's my advice. 1. Take a step back when things get hard. Your life shouldn't revolve around getting the next news update about your favorite group. You don't have to spend every second of the day streaming or worrying about some random ass bitch on the TL talking about how Tail can't sing. Go outside and touch some grass. 2. Ask yourself, is the fight really worth it? What do you gain? Is this benefiting you in any way? 3. We should work together for achievements to make this community a better environment. A music genre doesn't need to be dealt with so seriously. It's just music and everyone should be able to have fun and enjoy what they're listening to. 4. Draw up meaningless fandom B. I don't care if citizens hate blinks for what they did during a specific era or if rebel loves are quote unquote toxic. Stop worrying about it and stop generalizing fandoms as bad when every fandom has bad apples. So what constitutes a real K-pop fan? 
Honestly, I don't know what a universal checklist would be, but aligning with what I mentioned earlier pertaining to a fan's obligations, I'll put it simply, don't feel like you owe anyone anything. K-pop is a hobby and it should be kept that way. I'd also like to make this closing statement. If companies don't shape up and start providing the proper resources to their trainees and idols when it comes to cultural etiquettes, there will be a big shift in K-pop, causing many international fans to leave. I've been saying this for a while and I'll say it again. K-pop is a trend and will not last as it tries to expand if these elements are not tackled. These company practices are not sustainable for international stands. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and listening to my thoughts. Some people who inspired me to make this video are at Yoongi's on TikTok where she made a similar string of videos and a bunch of other K-pop YouTubers who I can't list here since it's a lot. I'd also like to plug Yerang's on Instagram. She has made comics related to black culture appropriation that got featured in a video for the trainee girl group Yours that I'll leave in the description. I plan to talk about other rising issues in K-pop when I have the time on this channel, so please leave some feedback for the future. Stay safe and have a good day.